Enhance your writing with parallelism in English grammar. Parallelism is an aspect of grammar that is concerned with coherent and symmetrical expression of thoughts. Coherent because it allows for an ordered presentation of ideas, concepts or listing in a sentence. Parallelism involves the arrangement of equally ranked grammatical elements, especially in a listing. Take for instance, I went home, to bathe, to eat, and to rest. If you look closely at the sentence above, you would notice that each of the items in the listing is an infinitive phrase, and this helps in striking a balance between the listed items, adding rhythm to the sentence, and logical flow of ideas. Now observe this contrary position, I went home to bathe, to eat, and resting. Can you identify the differences between this sentence and the previous one? This new sentence shows a lack of coordinations or coherence in its structure. The listing begins with an infinitive phrase and ends with gerund which breaks the balance and rhythmic quality of the sentence. It lacks symmetry in the way it presents the list of items. Parallelism, therefore, exists in two forms, namely, parallelism by listing. Parallelism by paragraphs. Parallelism by listing. Parallelism by listing is an aspect of parallelism that is concerned with achieving symmetry in the presentation of a list of items in a sentence, as illustrated in the preceding paragraph. A number of grammatical concepts can be used to ensure parallelism such as, infinitives, gerunds, words, phrases, or even clauses. What matters is that you end your listing, the way you started it, that is, the grammatical approach you used to start your listing must be sustained all the way through to the end of your listing. Listing in infinitives. When you start a list with an infinitive or an infinitive phrase, every other item in the listing must take the same format in order to achieve parallelism. Take for example, he likes to pray, to cook, and to tidy every day. Compare with, he likes to pray, cook, and tidy every day. Although sentence, B, sounds more natural, it fails the test of parallelism because it does not correspond to the format with which the listing was started, infinitive phrase, and as a result, the sentence lacks symmetry and rhythm. Listing in gerunds. When you start a list with a gerund, verbs ending in ing that function as nouns, every other item in the listing must take the same format in order to achieve parallelism. Take for example, John likes walking, talking, and sleeping. Compare with, John likes walking, talking, and to sleep. The error is easily identifiable in sentence, b, because not only does it sound unnatural, but it also obstructs the flow of the sentence with an abrupt end. Parallelism ensures unity of ideas in a sentence, so if you are starting a listing with a gerund, maintaining that format throughout your listing will ensure symmetry and coherence in your presentation of ideas. Listing in words. When you start a list with a word every other item in the listing must take the same format in order to achieve parallelism. Take for example, he is strong, talented, and agile. Compare with, he is strong, a, talented man, and agile. The second list item in sentence, b, breaks the symmetry and balance of the sentence because it is a noun phrase slotted in the listing of items which already began as adjectives. What this means in simple terms is that phrases should not be used in the presentation of list items in a sentence when the listing started with a lexical category, or word. So if you start a list with an adjective, you are to maintain that format through to the end of your listing. Listing in phrases. When you start a list with a phrase every other item in the listing must take the same format in order to achieve parallelism. Take for example, the principal is a nicer man, a devoted husband, and a well-to-do proprietor. Compare with, the principal is a nice man, devoted, and a well-to-do proprietor. Sentence, B, almost comes off as a natural utterance, however, it lacks balance and unity of ideas because the format used to start the listing, noun phrase, was not sustained throughout the list. When you start a list with a noun phrase or any kind of phrase, 
you are to maintain that format all the way to the end of your listing to achieve parallelism, that means, words, should not stand as individual elements of a list item that already started out as a phrase. Take note, also, that you must stick to the particular phrasal category, or phrase type with which you started your listing to achieve parallelism. Take for example, the principal is a nice man, diligently working, and a well-to-do proprietor. The second list item in sentence, C, is an adjectival phrase, slotted in a listing that started off as a noun phrase, hence it fails the test of parallelism because it upends the balance of the listing. Listing in clauses. When you start a list with a clause every other item in the listing must take the same format in order to achieve parallelism. Take for example, I know he cooks well, teaches excellently, and plays decently. Compare with, I know he cooks, well, will teach excellently, and plays decently. Now, the fact that sentence, B, maintains the status quo of ensuring that each of the list items is a clause may tempt you to believe that it is a parallel sentence. However, it is not and this is because of the tense used. Tense is a key instrument in the determination of parallelism in a listing. If you start a listing with clauses in their present tense, you are to maintain the tense throughout the listing. Likewise if you start a listing with past tense or future tense. The second list item in example, B, breaks the symmetry of the sentence by starting with a modal verb which restructures the clause into the format of a future tense clause, hence the sentence lacks unity of ideas. Parallelism by paragraph. Parallelism by paragraphs is a type of parallelism that is achieved when each paragraph in a piece of writing follows a particular structure, and maintains it throughout the writing. For example, the first paragraph in a piece of writing may start with a phrase, or a clause, and it is expected that this format is maintained throughout the writing to achieve parallelism. Parallelism by phrases in paragraphs. When, a paragraph starts with a phrase in a piece of writing, it is expected that the same format is maintained throughout the writing. Take for example, a man with a purpose will always work towards achieving his goals. A man of his words is a rare gem in any society. Compare with, a man with a purpose will always work towards achieving his goals. Keeping to one's words makes one a rare gem to society. You can spot the switch in the second paragraph in sentence, B. It does not sustain the format of starting off each paragraph with a noun phrase, instead, it starts with a gerundive phrase breaking the rhythm and symmetry of the writing. If you are to start the body of a piece of academic writing with a noun phrase, you are to stick to it to the end to achieve parallelism. Parallelism by clauses, in paragraphs. When a paragraph starts with a clause in a piece of writing, it is expected that the same format is maintained throughout the writing. Take for example, we must protect our environments and forestall global warming. It is important because it makes for a healthy living environment. Compare with, we must protect our environments and forestall global warming. Because it is important. Because it makes for a healthy living environment. Sentence, B, starts with a dependent clause instead of a main clause like the first paragraph hence it fails to achieve parallelism. Sentence, A, on the other hand, maintains a strict adherence to starting off each paragraph with a main clause as a result, it achieves parallelism. So in essence, parallelism can be achieved in the body of a piece of writing when it adheres strictly to the format used in the first paragraph. Parallelism applies strictly to academic and more formal varieties of writing because these rules are not binding on creative writings, at least not all of it, and some forms of technical writing. See you soon.